Greetings, this is Gregory, can I help you? Hey, Adrian. <laughs> now, now the, uh, the arrangement is I'm gonna call when uh, uh, Campways opens up. I sent him an email, but I'm gonna call him and see if they have an extra spot. Uh, and then I'll go uh, take the trailer down to the uh, storage slot where my Airstream is. But that's but that's but that's around. I, we may do it even after the meeting. I mean, I'm I'm gonna uh, talk to Cheryl around 10:30. I should know by then if there's a spot there, uh, and then so I'll be on for the first hour, and then you can take it from there. If if we do it by 11 o'clock, she 11 o'clock was just you know the, the the easy way to be able to get access to where it is. But she thinks she can get into it even if the um, Deborah isn't there. Uh, or we can make arrangements for this afternoon. But, you know, I mean, I talked to Cheryl and she's, you know, she knows how much she's put herself in a, or us in a kind of a box because, you know, the, the woman Deborah wasn't, you know, certifiably capable of being able to keep it where she was. Um, the landlord, you know, was kind of iffy. And uh, so anyway, the landlord says uh, the people who are, whose property it is are clear that they're going to have it towed away if we don't tow it away. And Deborah has no real capability of uh, putting it anywhere else. And Cheryl was proposing either the Grange or her house, neither of which sounded very secure or, or long-term. We need to talk on Thursday about, you know, having a permanent storage place for this one and or any others. Because uh, if we're going to have, uh, you know, a, a home hauling, you know, either on recreational vehicle or anything else, we're going to have to have some place permanent to put them. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I know, but 65 bucks a month is not cheap and you need to be able to have some place that, you know, can get them and 
you know, we need to up the ante on doing it, you know, because you can easily use up, you could use up a lot of money. Well, 65 is what I pay for mine. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, so that's why, you know, I mean, I feel I'm going to go down and put six months, you know, rent into save, you know, the campways to park this one, you know, and what six times that's 365 bucks, um, you know, for six months, but you could get, you know, three or four down there and it'll start to add up. So anyway, I know that, I know that, but right now we got one that's not going to be used and needs to be stored, so. Yeah, so do I. Otherwise we're going to be, and it, I think maybe one of the things we could do is in homeless action, at least announce, hey, we're looking for a space that we can put more than one for low cost, you know, and there might be somebody who says, oh, sure, I know where there's a place, but you got to have it out in three months or something, you know. I, Whatever. Okay. Uh, you saw the paper that uh, Azure Hotel got funded by the state? Oh, the county got 11. It's uh, Voices on Homelessness has the full press release from the governor. Um, but basically, it's $11 million. And uh, it's supposed to be aimed at um, at-risk COVID uh, homeless who have been in uh, non-congregate sites. Um, so they're giving priority to, you know, to folks who were at Finley or folks who were, you know, over um, at Sonoma State or, you know, which I, I, that was my first question. Okay, so you got, you know, 45 uh, permanent supportive housing units. How are you going to choose who goes there? Well, but we need, I know, but we need to push ourselves in the door. We need to be able to say, hey, we're as legitimate as anybody else. Let's try to make sure that somebody from, you know, the folks on our roster end up, ends up there. Okay. All righty. See you. Bye-bye. We should have a subsidiary called Home Haulers. Sonoma Home Haulers.
Greetings. Oh, okay. Hang on. Yeah, I was doing something else and didn't pay attention to it. Hang on. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, you and Susan and Teddy. Hello. Howdy. How you doing? I'm uh, okay. I was um, just filling out a business uh, license for the city of Santa Rosa. Oh, fun. Yeah, I'm, 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 in, I'm getting a license for something I'm calling Sonoma Home Haulers. Uh, oh, cool. What, what's the mission or the goal of that? Uh, moving uh, trailers around in the city and parking them. Uh, we have one that I have to do today. Oh, wow. I figured that I'd just incorporate a little business, uh, hire some homeless, and let, yeah. them, let them use my uh, trailer, I mean, my uh, um, car. A social enterprise. Yep, exactly. There you go. That's very cool. Um, before we start, can you, I want to make a donation to you guys. Can you tell me what address to send it to? And 15, to save? Sure. 1565 Terrace Way. Okay. Number 213. A zip 01 or 03? Uh, 03, I think. Okay. I just, uh, I've been putting it off, not for any reason other than being busy, so I'm going to get on that this week. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Gary, Jerry's coming in and Adrian's coming in. Nice. Guys, you well, I was going to say you're early, but it's 9.29, so I, you're not gonna... I'm early, too. Hey, <laughs> We're, We're all early. early. For a change. We try. Yeah. You, you do. I just got a um, message on Facebook, Jerry, from someone who's got a whole person care uh, case worker. Oh, good. And, yeah, he was despairing. You know, I gave him all the information. I never heard back, and I was like, "No, I think you got a good one. I, I'm hopeful for you." Mm -hmm. So, you can always give out my number too, even if it's not me. <laughs> oh, good. Maybe if I if I had him call you, you could maybe check and see if he's really in some if if he's yeah. in an active place. Yes. Yeah. Oh, great. I'll do that. It's oh, easy that's to do. exciting. I that's love good. to be able to help one person, one bit. Just yeah. That's how it really works. Yeah. I know. So for the agenda today, I want to just have a little chat about the, the cost that's being paid for the Azure Hotel and compare it to the oh, other yeah. apartment complex at the corner of Santa Rosa Avenue and 3rd. Great. Rosa and 3rd. It's a it's a commercial apartment. It was in oh, yesterday. Oh yeah, yeah, the five, six story thing that's sitting across. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so that's that's at four hundred sixty one thousand a unit, with fifty million divided by one hundred and twenty. Yeah. Uh, and the Azura is I don't know what they're offering, but it that comes in at two hundred sixty one thousand a unit, uh -huh. which is actually surprisingly reasonable. Although it's a freaking hotel, <laughs> so there there were yeah. single rooms uh, with a luncheonette or whatever, and they're coming in at six two hundred sixty one thousand. You're gonna you're gonna factor in the rents that aren't going to be paid at the Azure, but will be paid heavily at the San Rosa and Third, right? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's hard. and then you the Santa Rosa and Third is also fifty million, but it includes commercial space on the ground floor. Right. Supposedly. Yeah, I'm just saying it's very hard for me to compare the two. One's going to cost $2,500 a unit to the individual who's there, and the other's going to be free. Well, not free. How much do you think? <laughs> Somebody's going to pay. No, yeah, all right. No, no, I mean, it's free to the individuals. I mean, they're not going to, 30% of their income is going to be no more than about 250 a month, right? These right. are chronic homeless, right? That's right. And that's, they need a place to live. Right. It's pretty uh, good. Hey, I, I could build you, if, if I'm going to get $2,500 a unit, I could build you some things too, but you know. Okay, yeah. Um, by the way, the entire press release for that whole thing is on Voices on Homelessness. So if you want to send something to anybody saying, here's what it's all about, only go to Voices on Homelessness. I stuck it up about 10 minutes ago. 
Thank you. Yeah, thank you. That's very helpful. So um, let's see, we need a question of the day. Hi, Victoria. Just want to say good morning. Here's, here's our question for today. Uh, today, Amy Coney Barrett is in judiciary hearings, and I would like to know how you have felt affected or not affected by a Supreme Court decision in your life. Is that a clear question? Yeah. Well, okay. Who wants to start? Can we uh, do Martin versus Boise? <laughs> you can go for it, Gregory. Well, I, you know, I was pleased that uh, somebody, even somebody over in Idaho, challenged the notion that people who were on the street, uh, you know, were allowed to be kicked off the street into jail and other places every time the police wanted. Uh, and that it was a violation of uh, several constitutional rights and that it went to all the way to the Supreme Court and they basically um, acknowledged that um, people have rights. And the Supreme Court didn't take it up to, to right. uh, well, they could have thrown it out, but they didn't take it. Well, but denying taking it is the same as making a decision, so. Yeah. Okay, well, who's next? Wants to, uh, a Supreme Court decision that's affected you Roe versus Wade. Yeah. Say a little more, Victoria. In what way? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't have well, to go ahead. <laughs> I was pretty young. I was I was 17 or 18, and the decision had just come down and they had just opened up the clinic just in time. And I was like two weeks pregnant and I was like, and I had my letter accepting me to go to USC and everything, you know? So, wow. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Betty, how about you? Sure. Thank you, Adrian. Um, you know, it wasn't, I'm, I'm not pointing to a decision as much as I am pointing to a confirmation process. If people remember back to when Anita Hall was going through confirmation and pointing her, bringing up the sexual harassment of Clarence, Clarence Thomas. And I happen to be from a, a lot, a good deal of those hearings, sitting in the dentist chair, half knocked out, getting crowns on my mouth. So I, it was a collective audience and I felt like, oh my God, what a brave person. And I think it did obviously open the way for sexual harassment cases, but it seems like the same with Black Lives Matter, there's been a lull. So I would just like for people not to forget like how gutsy a move that was for her, especially in those days going so far back. So I, I think about her actually a lot. So that was a, an influence. Her name's Anita Hill. Hill, yes, thank you. Yeah. She climbed a big hill. Yeah, she and did. Didn't get a much. Well, she got our appreciation. Yeah. Suzanne, any Supreme Court decision that's affected you? I, I'm sure there are, but mostly it's affected my way of thinking and my, my uh, uh, feelings for, for women and, and the things that we can do. I, I'm not going to go into something specific. Thank you. Ah. Jerry. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm Jerry. Um, two, two tracks. One is Anita Hill and Clarence Thomas. I, I was moving, I was in living in Eureka and moving away, but I had to fix underneath the house, like down in the crawl space under the house. So I listened to the whole hearing under my house. <laughs> I mean, for days, the whole thing, because I was working the whole time. Um, so there's that. But the, the one that really makes me wonder is the the next one uh, the Affordable Care Act decision that's about to happen yeah. on one hand I think oh this is horrible but on the other hand especially if we win the election it will be a major opportunity to rewrite that and reestablish it you know that if it gets thrown out that's actually as much an opportunity as it is a tragedy only and so it will be very interesting to, to see what happens next. Yeah. Because we need health care. And so we'll get Medicare for all. You're, you're right. You're assuming that we're going to get even more liberal. Yeah. 
No, no, no crosstalk, no crosstalk. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> I'm just the only one that gets thinking to right now. And yes. I'll say that's a really positive take, which I'm happy to have today. <laughs> Eileen, a sure. Supreme Court decision that has affected you. Well, nothing physically or whatever, but emotionally, certainly R.V. Wade, Roe v. Wade, and uh, the Thomas hearings were amazing. I was working on my thesis at that time and it was just all there in the background it's just very i don't know devastating yeah thank you uh barbara have you been affected by a supreme court decision and which one um i'm just dashing in here right now and collecting my thoughts so i'm going to pass on this one right now <laughs> i had a little okay. trouble getting Okay, thanks. Hi, Pat. Um, a Supreme Court decision that has affected you. Um, well, the, the best way I can answer this question is all of them. Because <laughs> I live here in this country and the decisions they make affect me and what goes on. And I'm not running for office. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say, um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, this is a, sort of a decision, but watching the movies and realizing what she put up with as a young woman trying to get some toehold and ending up in the Supreme Court, like this victory march really over sexism. And then realizing that she ended up with Clarence Thomas and uh, who's that other bastard, the new one, that she had to put up with him, even in her 80s, even at the top of the leadership of the legal profession. It, was, it's, it always reminds me that, you know, we just have to fight and don't expect things to get all better for us personally. But she sure helped get things get better for a lot of women. So I hope she felt it was worth it. And men. And men too, absolutely. Okay. We have a pretty small group today and we were going to make our major topic uh, the thing that Alice Lynn has been wanting us to talk about for a while, which is the being coming a more of a membership organization. So we'll see if she comes. If she doesn't come, we might, might be short today. We might go quickly. Uh, <coughs> so uh, I would like to have first some feedback about last week's meeting with the Healdsburg theme and then other reports, then we'll talk about the home key decision that Santa Rosa just got a lot of money for fixing up the Azure Hotel. And um, that's about it on my, my report. Is there other things that people want to talk about today? Yeah, the COC status. COC, is that, yeah. do you want to do that as a report or discussion? I think a discussion. Yeah, are you, I'll, I'll leave it up to you if Alice does uh, attend the meeting, it, that's the yeah. priority. Then. I'd also like a report <laughs> on where camps are showing up and I can report on a few. Okay. Yeah, I have some trash cans I'd like to distribute. <laughs> Yay, but Eileen. Uh, just that they're gonna talk about the community hospital property. Oh yeah, Sinead. Yeah. Uh, Barbara? Um, yeah, I'm just wondering where everyone is who has been swept, and I don't have a sense of that. And also, if they're still getting food. And I go by the Grange uh, quite often, and I, uh, where they were cooking food with uh, Cheryl, and I just haven't seen any activity there. So I'm wondering if this food is being you know, made and if, if how it gets to people at this time. Great. We'll put that into the saves. We have a little report from saves. Uh, Pat. If we get five minutes, I've been wondering recently about how it is that the money get, gets allocated to the county from the state gets to us. I mean, it's not just like somebody from Sacramento shows up with a check, is it? Doesn't no, it probably not. Yeah. So let's put that into the home key since that's right up in our thing because that's a good yeah. question. There are committees. Um, so if I'm, I have like 
no information there. And if so, some of those details could get, I would be very interested. Great. Okay. Anything else, Greg? I just let someone in on the on the uh, back room, so I, I don't know if you're keeping track of that. Well, I wasn't, but I'm glad you did. Yes. I'll are you putting Are attention. you putting the agenda up in the chat? I will in just a second. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, under reports, let's just start with that. And does anyone have one? Uh, anything that's happened this week that? Uh, you want to tell the rest of us about Gregory? Yeah, let me just give you a report on this morning's move of a trailer. Um, the announcement I want to make is that Saves is interested in trying to find a place that we can put trailers temporarily um, in between getting them and uh, fixing them up and having a place to permanently put them. We have one that today I have to move from Forestville to a storage lot on South Santa Rosa Avenue just because we don't have any other place to put it. So uh, if you know of a place that probably doesn't want a permanent person housed in a house, but wouldn't mind, wouldn't mind just letting a trailer sit on their property for a little while, kind of like we did with Gary on those huts, uh, let us know because it, uh, we're gonna pay 65 bucks a month just to have this trailer sit uh, doing nothing. And I'd much rather put it on a place that I don't have to pay for or um, that might be on its way to being a permanent place. Thank you. <clears throat> Somebody else had their hand up. Victoria, yes, you. You're, you're muted, Victoria. The hearing on the motion. Uh -huh. Oh, Wednesday. Yeah. I haven't been able to get a hold of the client to get her permission, so I'm calling it all off. Oh. You're still gonna be there, right? Yeah, I'm gonna be there. Good. So nobody else, you don't wanna have a, a rally and all that we were planning. Right, because I haven't asked her permission. I understand. Bummer. Is it the same judge that we've been uh, in front of before? The one in, um, what's his name, Anthony? No, uh, this is in Department Four. Okay, one thirty, Department Four on Wednesday. Great. The this 14th. Wednesday, right? The fourteenth. So people can still go. We're just not going to have a little press release hoo ha kind of thing. Yeah, we're not going to have a big yeah. hoo ha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, a SAVES report. Uh, oh, we have someone here by phone. Who is uh, 710-5200? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Not doing it too well this morning. Bruce, can you hear me? Oh, hi, Bruce. Oh, hi, Bruce. Bruce, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah, nice to have you. Hi, Bruce. Hi, Bruce. All right, so what's happening with SAVES is there is cooking going on at the Grange. Um, we were cooking four or five days a week, no, five to seven days a week, actually, getting food out to Los Gilicos and getting a little bit of food on the street. Los Gilicos uh, is evacuated from the fire, and they canceled us because the people are over at the fairgrounds and they're getting fed by FEMA. Uh, money i don't know who's exactly doing it but it's not us so we still have two days a week where uh the center for spiritual living team is going over there and they are looking for people to help distribute food they would like to keep cooking um but they don't have a way they need to like they'll bring food to a place but they don't have the capacity to then hand it out to a bunch of people drive around find camps all of that sort of thing um they did get a 20 bag lunches going out to Guerneville. So that's gonna happen at least one day a week. And I've been talking to Heather. I think maybe she will take some of it but from acts of kindness. We have to see how that, how we, if we can make it smooth. The other thing that happens is Cheryl uh, Rood, our outreach worker, she doesn't cook out of the Grange anymore, but she gets up in the morning. She told me this yesterday, she gets up at 4.30 in the morning and makes about a hundred bag lunches 
and then she goes out on her rounds with her band and basically gives them out throughout the day. So all of that is happening. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a, one of our workers, uh, Jackie, is out on a medical leave for a month, oh. and we're looking for a substitute. We get pay seven, $17 an hour. Uh, if you know someone who's uh, got some experience working in the camps um, and would like just to you know, work for a month, half time, be really cool. Let them give them a test. They need a car. What's that? No, they don't need a car. They do need to meet Cheryl somehow. So uh, meet Cheryl. Cheryl is the worker that goes out. So she usually works out of the office in Railroad Square. So, you know, if someone could get to Railroad Square, then they could go out with Cheryl in the van. Basically, they like to go out as a team. It's more efficient. Uh, we also got some good news. The Community Foundation uh, gave some grants for sort of emergency resiliency, let's help people right now quickly. And we just heard last Friday that they gave us $20,000. So that will really help this food distribution especially and uh, hopefully kind of beef up our ability to get people moved along into something more secure than just, you know, feeding them. So that's the report. Any questions about any of that? Thanks for that. Go ahead, Gary. Gary. So what's the status on that property behind the living room that where, where there was some conversation yeah. about trying to lease it? Yeah. It fell through. The uh, owner, property owner, decided he didn't want to work with us. I think he got scared off by something. But, it, 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 you know, it was all very polite, and it was hard to know what really happened. Okay. Argonaut Construction is the owner. Because there are now about 12 tents back behind there. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, Jerry asked, where were camps? Where is it? And someone else asked, where is everybody? So let's pool our information. Why don't you start, Jerry, since you, you know some of yeah, them. Yeah, so I was out on Friday looking around. And like I say, there's, you know, on the along the trail and the uh, there's about 12 pretty well-established tents. Um, I only knew one of the people. Um, it's not dirty. The, um, the police supposedly are telling people they're going to have to move because they're within 100 feet of a waterway, which is apparently that little, there's a little ditch that runs along the property or something. Um, so they're, but that's, there's a, a, a fair number of people back there. Uh, and they're pretty along, well established. When you say along the trail, you mean Jaradota, Santa Rosa Creek, what trail? So, so directly to the west of the living room, where the where, like where that Argonaut property okay. is, okay. there's space along the the train track trail. Gotcha. You know, and so that's so that's where you know easy ingress and egress for bicycles, okay. um, and whoever also all else is staying there. And then the other thing I've noticed, just as I come into work, I work over here on uh, uh, off a of Challenger and Apollo. Um, there's two fifth wheels parked at the at the south end of the complex, so way down on um, not on Corporate Center, but on the south end where the curve is. Does anybody know if Doyle Park is uh, or? Um... Uh, Olive Park or any of the other traditional places are filling up or even have anybody? I haven't heard anything, so. The only place I've seen people is uh, off um, Cleveland by the living room. Yeah, that's what Jerry was just pointing, yeah. Sorry, I just got on. That's okay. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I'm amazed at how few I've seen on both the streets and in the places that are traditionally. I think a lot of people may be out at the Alliance thing. Hmm. Well, one of the things I wanted to point out in the a press release from the governor about the Azure Hotel, uh, unlike the, unlike the uh, press, I mean, Democrat report this morning, 
which doesn't mention it. The press release says that the Azure Hotel is going to be focused uh, almost entirely on uh, COVID vulnerable um, uh, homeless individuals who have been in the non-congregate shelters that were set up for it. So somebody over in Sam Jones ain't going to be eligible. Somebody over in, you know, even Los Gilicos. Um, it depends on if you're placed in Finley or uh, the variety of hotels that, you know, Astro and others. Those folks are going to have high priority. Saves is going to try and get its clients in there too, but, you know, 42 slots, I'm curious as to how the county is going to decide who goes there. But it's not to the general homeless, it's to chronic vulnerable who had been placed in those temporary um, non-congregate shelters. I think uh, Sonoma State, the people from where that closed. Yeah, I have a feeling they went from there to another non-congregate, which is... Correct, it's, but it's the same group. Same, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we know some of those people by name and we need to figure out if, you know, they know about the opportunity because I'd love to see it not yeah. be just, you know, the first people someone thinks of. So Azure got second chance money then? Yep, 11 million. Mm -hmm. It's not second chance, it's home key, but it's, it's the last bit of the 600 million that was allocated by the legislature. And they, they got denied before that though, right, didn't they? Well, they've never been denied. They rolled, rolled them out in four chunks, and this was the last chunk. So um, to go back to where people are right now. Mm -hmm. um, what about Sebastopol they didn't get? Sorry. No, they didn't. Okay. Yeah, we'll get to home key in a minute. Um, anybody else know where they see people or know where to find people? Well, the Kings are still at the corner of Santa Rosa Avenue and Kiwana Springs. Still there in their huge tent. There's there's a guy there by um, uh, Fourth Street and College where they come together. Yeah, I know. But um, I think there's people out at uh, Place to Play. Oh, yeah. Good. Well, oh, there's a there's a um, a little camp along the creek by downtown. Uh, it's just west of the downtown Santa Rosa. They've been there a while. They've they figured out that if they're on the other side of the creek, there's not as much traffic. So there's been consistently between five and ten tents, and I don't know more than that other than I'm on the bike path all the time and I see them there and they've been there a while. Is that just west of the fish? Yes. Yeah I hear about that but I haven't found it yet. Found the camp, the the bike path camp? Mm -hmm. Yeah no yeah, it's under it's under the freeway as well as just to the west. Okay. It stretches along it stretches between Olive Park and the downtown. Right. The Prince Memorial uh, bikeway. Yeah. The yeah. What's happening out north of town, is it along Industrial, where people were being towed last week? No, or I thought oh, they'd be, there are RVs. I'm told it's okay. What? I'm told it's okay, but only, um, uh, she told me three, uh, Three units were towed, uh, two trailers and an RV. Uh, so they come and, and pick on people, but m the most of the people are still there. Yeah, there were 13 of them there uh, two weeks ago. So if three have gone, there's still eight. Ten. All right. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Barbara. Um. I, I just see random people, I mean, different places when I'm driving around, like along Petaluma Hill Boulevard, like there'll just be a bunch of, um, I don't know, looking like uh, somebody's in camp there, but would probably be like one person maybe, or a couple of people, and a lot more people just kind of out, I don't know, all around where um, Costco is on Santa Rosa okay. Avenue. Um, and then I, there's also vehicles I parked 
that look to me like they're people living in them on Santa Rosa Avenue, um, right. coming from Sebastopol before you get to Corporate Parkway. They're just like s several on each side of this street. On, I think on, there was some I mean, confusion of mm -hmm. the location. Pardon me? Can you clarify the location again? It's on Santa Rosa Avenue. And there's, um, if you start on Santa Rosa Avenue off of uh, Fulton, not Fulton, but I guess it's Wright Road, and you come up Santa Rosa <laughs> Avenue, and you go through a little uh, commercial area where there's, and, and then you pass that, and then right there, close to that, is um, I think you mean some vehicles. We think you mean Sebastopol Avenue, not Santa Yeah, Avenue. that's not Santa What did I say? Did I say Rosa the wrong thing? We, I was visually going down Palms in San Rosa. I think you mean Sebastopol Avenue. East Sebastopol Road, yeah. Okay, I said the wrong one. Okay. Yeah. And right to uh, downtown on Sebastopol Avenue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, Sebastopol Road and by right Road in Fulton. Yeah, where the bicycle place is and where. Uh, community yeah. bikes. Yeah, community bikes, right. I think there's social distancing. I think a lot of folks are just sort of, you know, big camps aren't in right now. Well, also they're very scattered. They were scattered and they're still, you know, people are being cautious because it draws police and yeah. neighbor attention. To me, this is, uh, you know, it's sad to see everybody in small, small groups all over the place. Gail. Yeah, did was it Heather that told us in another meeting that um, the virus is now in the camping population? Oh, shit. That's right. I can, I can give you a report, not from the camp, but from the, the hotel. Is it the Astro Hotel? People are after Sonoma State. They were closed down this week um, because somebody was positive. Mm. So they, they shut all the doors in the hotel rooms and told people to stay inside and they tested everyone. Um, so the, the virus is going around. They're no longer shut down. Apparently they got the person out of there that was positive for the staff person. Um, I don't know which. Yeah, there, there was a, a death this week. Benny Frank yeah. Gonzalez who uh, passed away three or four days ago in Aller Park. Not a drug overdose. I, I think the cause of death is still unknown. Benny? Yep. I knew that guy. Yeah, a lot of people did. <laughs> yeah, he was everywhere. Oh, <laughs> Sorry you had to hear it here. That's all. Yeah, this, this brings hey, up me. Did you uh, tell us when he died? I'm sorry, Anita, what? That seems absurd. Three days and they still don't know why he died? Well, releasing it. My information comes individually, so I don't know if there's an official cause of death out there. We just haven't found out yet. I don't know. He was very young. Yeah, he's not an old, I see a picture of him. He's not an old guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems essential that we have to know if he was out and about with the homeless people. Yeah. Well, hopefully we'll hear more as the week goes on. Keep it a secret? Don't know yet. I don't know, Anita. I doubt it, but I don't know. Mm. Um, so that brings, I guess, mm -hmm. to the homeless memorial. Uh, which is a week from Saturday on the 24th. There should be a flyer come out soon about that. Uh, everything, all the arrangements are going along pretty well. I think the one, um, I still haven't gotten news on the art build, which is supposed to be next Saturday. So I don't know when and where, if any of you are interested in doing the art build. And the one thing that could be the homeless action piece of all this is flowers. No one is really taking on the flowers for the event. And I wonder if you all would be interested in that. If, you, if any of you have it, grow flowers in your yard or have a, a flower 
contact that might be Maybe. really nice to have a lot of flowers there. Where? Maybe. Ari? Where do you want flowers? At the homeless memorial on the 24th. You don't really think that a lot of people are going to congregate. I think a lot of people will come. Sure. I mean, I think people are coming because there's been a bunch of deaths and people need to mourn. You know, I just heard from Cheryl that- Isn't morning. there a law against congregations? We have to be, we have to be careful about how to do it, but that's being handled, I think, not by me. Where's it gonna be? It's gonna start at the Olive Park and march over to the Prince Memorial uh, Fish, you know, the uh -huh. start of the parkway, and then a little ceremony there at the fish area. I think we did it there before too. Oh, we wouldn't go. We had a little, little walk for David Grable there once. David Grable, right? Yeah, I just remembered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody interested in anyone to for this event? I'll be back in a while. Please excuse me. Okay. I don't see any, any, the flower thing is not resonating, so that's, that's okay. Uh, well, I know where there are a lot of flowers, and I can get them for you. I'm going to order those phone holders to today. Event. I'm sorry, Anita, would you take, have the, have the floor? What did you say? I said, I know where there's a lot of flowers. I could get them for you, but I'm not going to the event. That's oh. crazy. That's not you don't know why he died. He could have had the virus, and you're asking people to congregate? Yeah, but he's not going to be there. <laughs> Definitely not going to be there. No, but all of his friends will be there, and they're the ones that are carrying the virus. Yeah, maybe, huh? Just I, like Trump. I think it's slightly crazy to have an event. I'm sorry. I, 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 my heart goes out to the fellow that died. That he was not in the hospital. That he was laying at Doyle Park. Did you say? No. No. In in at Olive, um, Eileen, and then Gail. Excuse me. Well, it's. Yeah, I think everybody just needs to be careful. And it's for lots of homeless people. It's for all the ones who have died. And we did a, a huge um, what rally, not a rally, but um, event for Ruth Bader Ginsburg at the courthouse square. Everybody was masked and used safe distance. And that's, you do that, I think it's fine. Yeah, they will have masks there for everyone in case they don't bring them. Uh, Gail? That was what I was going to say, that masks are going to be provided and it's going to be outdoors and people will be advised to distance. And uh, don't worry, Anita, not all of us will be there in person, but some people really need to mark the deaths um, and they, they're, they're the ones that are organizing this. So uh, I think it's going to be all right. A mask is not prevent the virus i know yeah <laughs> well well the bottom line is this is not our event so it's going to be happening i think i can pass your concerns on and certainly some of them are shared by the people who are organizing it uh so I don't you know that did, did you know that um you know adriana's uh st vincent of paul so um, her assistant, did you know her assistant died? I had heard that. About two weeks ago, yeah. And it's mm -hmm. sort of, I don't know. They're going to have a memorial. It would be nice to actually put them together if you would, because she has so many things to do. She wouldn't have to do Why an individual Why did she die? He the guy. It was a guy. I don't know. He was overweight. It could have been COVID, an overweight issue, or 
Who knows? I don't they know. They wouldn't tell people. They're supposed to tell people to make sure. Uh, I don't know exactly what he asked for. It could have been some other thing entirely. So, uh, well, Thomas, I missed something you said about that particular day. What? You said something in particular about it that somebody didn't have time, and I missed what you said. Oh, uh, Adriana to do a memorial for him. She's trying to arrange it. Maybe it would be good to put them together. That way it would relieve her of a lot of difficulty. That's a good idea. I'll reach out to her. I don't know if it's the same sort of situation, but maybe. Um, okay. He's in the community. Here he was. Yes. Gregory, did you want to speak? Yeah, I just wanted to ask everybody to mute yourself unless you're talking. There's an annoying whacking going on uh, yeah. that makes it hard for me to understand people. Okay, boy, it got quiet. Thank you. <laughs> um, what is that squeaking noise? It's probably distortion from someone's telephone or their connection. Um, let's see. I think we should call Alice Lynn. Um, maybe one of the other of you could take on talking about the um, the home key question. And I'll get off the this and mute myself and call Alice. Uh, Teddy, could you? Uh, I can answer the question of how the money gets here. It's wire transferred between uh, Sacramento and uh, Santa Rosa. Um, this eleven million will come in one check, uh, just like the other twelve million came in one check. So there is a state. Body, I've referred to it before. It's called the California Homeless Coordinating and Financing Council. It's made up of all of the directors of all of the departments and about seven other major uh, service providers in the state that the governor appoints. And it has the control over most of the California homeless money. Good. So I just want to intercept that one check then. Yep. <laughs> goes, to yeah. the, goes to the controller. So Adrian asked Teddy if you have any comment on the home key issue, Teddy. I, I don't really. I've just seen that, of course, the CAN network is, is dead set against that. Um, I'm in favor, but I, at, in, in uh, light of protecting the community around any facilities like that, we need to have very strong uh, case management. And so that's where I always worry about the county falling off. It's the promises of strong supports for people, and then they they don't generally pan out that way. So, I'm all for any location, and if I were a hotel owner, I'd be the first to offer that up. But the goal of those types of living arrangements is to get people to move through and move on, and that falls apart very badly here in Sonoma County. The there are three facilities that are all sort of vying for the permanent supportive housing with the support uh, being a little unclear. Um, there was no money from the state for operating for these for the years uh, We're supposed to come up with that locally. There's also the uh, Caritas um, who's getting uh, no place like home money, which is permanent supportive housing, same characters, and it has no money for operating. Uh, the third one is the uh, one on Cleveland and, or West College and Cleveland. Uh, those old big Quonset huts, and they got $10 million. It's a group called Danco. Uh, and similarly, there was no operating money from the state. Uh, the conditions of these millions of dollars for permanent supportive housing is that the locals will come up with it. So uh, you're right to be concerned. Uh, and it's, it seems to us uh, needing to follow up on those, at least those three, because they're, the real, they're really the only three homeless targeted permanent housing uh, that's being built. Um, right. And Gregory, I think one of the issues that we face is that um, the lack of trust in, in that back end support really has pulled a lot of our key providers back from committing to those things. 
um, in a big way. So that may be Barbie's opportunity to bring other contractors in from outside the county, which is I've heard what she her core belief system is. But, you know, none of these, it, it depends, first of all, on how we all define success. But just getting the capital money to get these is not the end of the road for my, my kind of success anyway. I agree. That was the problem I had with what CDC, what they told me, even, even uh, Nancy Dornowitz, when they told me, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm muted. Uh, and Nancy Gornowitz, and what they told me was that the housing authority was just a financing arm. No. You need to get houses built. Is that Bruce? Bruce, can you mute yourself? Thank you. Okay, so other any other questions, concerns, or thoughts about the Azure Hotel and Home Keep process? I, I was listening with half a lot, uh, an ear, but I didn't hear anyone say who's going to run it. Right. Hey. Is it supposed to be run by the county itself? Well, this Local. is always a big question, Adrian. Yeah, I know, that's why I'm asking it. Gregory, do you know in uh, what you just mentioned about who ended up with those units through No Place Like Home or those other funding buckets, is, was Gen H advocating for any of those transactions to take place or is Gen H not really involved in, in this level of procurement or advocacy, I guess? All of the money is targeted at incomes much lower than Gen H wants to serve. These are okay. homeless, chronic homeless mentally ill. Uh, who generally don't qualify for 80% uh, of median income rentals. Mm -hmm. is aimed at the uh, missing middle, not the bottom. Right. Although, um, they, Jesus had mentioned to me about a month ago that they wanted to be in support of PSH, PSH, which is Permanent Supportive Housing for folks, which would be targeting <clears throat> folks who need supportive services. And so that's why I'm wondering where they're you know, kind of going with that, um, with that statement. The fuzziness about support in the term permanent housing support, you know, CSN and the groups that I've been working with all our lives has been supporting 15 and low, you know, 30% right. and low. Uh, just because the, the world's in flux right now, people are making 70, 80,000 bucks, a, you know, a year and needing support. Okay. So when, uh -huh. when, when Jesus talks about supportive housing, he's talking about someone who's going to be making just below market rate and still okay. need support. Okay. okay. So support is the, the, the fuzziness of this, how, how much <clears throat> you have and still need support. Right. So there, there is operating money. If I read this press release, there is some operating money. And it was given out to everybody but us. Ah. Hmm. 50 million bucks was put aside by the legislature and it ain't going to us. It was given to others. You know, there's 175, you know, projects that were given out. So, you know, right. there's, there's a lot of people who had better project designs for their support. Um, we didn't. Hmm. And I, I want to bleed this conversation over to the leadership council because at the time when we're trying to figure out who's running things and whether there's any money for support, uh, there's confusion over who's going to be making those decisions. Uh, right. I, I want us to, to see the connection because until we get a real leadership council that either blesses things in the past or uses, I mean, because remember there's like 3 million bucks coming down in the spring for things that could be support uh, or continuation of the same projects we've been having. And that decision over how that money is spent uh, mm -hmm. is going to be made by the new leadership council. Right. So before we go on, I just want to mark that the Sebastopol Inn did not get funded. So right. all the brouhaha in Sebastopol uh, was basically for not one, either one way or another. All right, let's go on. Uh, oh, let me ask too, does anyone have a current phone number for Alice Lynn? The one I have uh, mm. doesn't work. I've got one, Adrian, and I'll drop it in the chat. Great, thank you. 
All right, let's talk about what, where are we with the, the uh, continuum of care, formerly the Leadership Council? Adrian, may I step back one step? Sure. So I want to say that the Sebastopol Bruhaha is not a waste of time or energy. I think the concept that Sebastopol has its responsibility and its opportunities is real. And the only the the state effort only had half of the money that they wanted. So everybody got significantly <clears throat> less than they asked for in different projects. But I do think that we could build on this concept that it, you know, other parts of the county are going to have these locations. And even if that's a failure, um, it's not a complete failure because it does set a precedent and a concept. Yeah, you're right. And I was kind of an uh, opponent uh, to say, ha ha, you, okay. <laughs> you waste <laughs> a lot of energy. <laughs> but I'm sorry. You're, it's you're not much a waste. Thoughtful. It's not a complete waste, just mostly. You're, right. <laughs> you're, you're much more thoughtful about it. Gregory. And, and to add to that, don't forget that on January 31st, you know, two million people in California living in apartments are probably going to be sus uh, subject to eviction. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. And those folks, as I, said, I reported last week, um, are, are the concern of a whole lot of people at the state level about where they're going to go if they can't negotiate continuation. If they end up on the streets, they're going to be prime candidates for, you know, hotel. They, they may not be long-term homeless, but they're going right. to be homeless with money. Uh, and uh, so places like right. the Festival Inn and any other failing <clears throat> hotel, uh, are probably going to get some money from the state to be able to house some of these folks. So it's absolutely not a wasted effort to be able to think about where we would put more mm -hmm. people. Okay, I, I'm trying to reach Alice. So, so would someone else uh, take a little bit more discussion here of the continuum of care community? Just update people where are we with that well anita's got her hand up that's <clears throat> facilitation process i got i have been awarded rental assistance uh -huh. through community action network so yeah. if someone who has an apartment and can't pay their rent makes an app their funding is through a personal donation they want me to write a letter of thanks. <clears throat> so there is funding available for rental assistance. I don't know how big it is or anything, but four hundred thousand. You know some of them. It's four hundred thousand dollars. I got it. It's four hundred thousand dollars a year. And twenty years ago, when I was chair of the board of CAP, I got the individual who owns a bunch huh. of mobile home parks to give every year 400,000 bucks. Um, and yeah, it's called the HCA oh. fund. There's another chunk yes. of money that the county put in a month ago, two and a half million, that the county still hasn't decided who's gonna be administering it. And it's aimed at individuals in rentals who are going to be evicted and need uh, up to 5,000 bucks to be able to uh, stay where they're at. But the HCA fund is the oldest continual first last security and and uh, you know, assistance um, funded by a guy uh, in his family in Novato. What does HCA stand for again, Greg? It's his initials. Oh. And he died a few years ago, and but his family continued the funding. Right. And Santa Rosa <laughs> City, and the Santa Rosa City puts in fifty thousand dollars to CAP in order to do the administration of it. That's a, that's a long story. But they did award the other rental assistance uh, to four different agencies, mostly to CAP, um, okay. but then also to Petaluma people and um, I think West County, but I'd have to double check. But that was about a week and a half ago they announced those. Great. I've been trying to pester them. Mm -hmm. I encouraged to go in is to tell me when they get it. So thanks, Jerry. Who was the donor? He the original donor was this HCA guy. I forget what his name was, but that was like many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. he, he, he used to give 300000 to Sonoma, 300000 to Napa, and a lot to Seattle. Uh, and then when he died, his family realigned it, but they still paid for it. 
but they never would pay for administration. So the county picked it up and apparently the city of Santa Rosa also picked up some of that administration. And he asked me not to reveal his name and I've been trying to do right. it. I think they revealed it when he passed away, but I do have to find the article, newspaper article or whatever where that was mentioned. But yeah, for a long yeah. time, he was anonymous. Who, how exactly do you contact whatever this group is? It's, it's HCA, if somebody. It's Community Action Partnership Sonoma County, the old SCPEO, the group that is the federal poverty program in Sonoma County. They're down on uh, Stony Point Road, 141, I think. Stony Circle, Stony Circle. Oh, Stony Circle, okay. Okay, thank you. And they still administer season of sharing as well. Yeah. It's, it's right close to the Volunteer Center and yep. PG&E building. It's in that area. Hey, thank you. Okay. I'll send you the information if you'd like, Barbara. Vera. Yes, uh, please. That would be great. Thank you. Suzanne, you've got your hand up. You're next. You. I had to step away when you were talking about Sebastopol, I, but I could hear it. Anyway, I just wanted to add for anyone who does go to city council every single time i either say something or send an email for the public comment related to things like uh safe parking and and all of it and one of the board members um una glass is very 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 pro solutions for um shelterless people so i just would encourage others who are in or near Sebastopol to, you know, even if you just send an email, you don't even really have to listen to the meeting if you don't want, um, it might be helpful. You don't have to be a Sebastopol resident either. That's all for me. Thank you, Suzanne. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the effort every week. It makes a big difference. Uh, Thomas, you have your hand up. Yes. Um... Well, I just wanted to remind people that I had sent out a, uh, you know, an email describing a, a project management tool called um, the House of Quality. And what it does is it fills in the blanks between sort of the resources that you have and the goals that you want to achieve because there's many steps in between. And it's, so it's a logic model that allows you to attempt to fill those blanks in. And this is regarding COC as to how, and, and they're, gonna re, they're gonna retool COC, but the question is, what does it do? How does it integrate? How do we actually get participation of elected officials in a way that doesn't circumvent the actual HUD uh, requirements for COC. In other words, how do we actually do this thing? And we don't know how to do it. This is not a thing that says this is how to do it. It's a thing which allows you the flexibility to ask the questions and to integrate the answers. 